Hey everybody, I am Cinnamon Cooney, your art sherpa, and today I'm going to show you how you can paint this gorgeous watercolor scene. It's like a paradise getaway, and the whole process of this is a technique called wet into wet. It's one of the first techniques that you learn in watercolor, and this is a very beginner-friendly lesson. On the mic is my husband, John. Hello. He's going to make sure that we can bring this lesson together with, for you, because he's going to Face the camera, no, I'm tongue tied today. He's gonna direct the cameras at the techniques that I'm demonstrating, the colors that I'm mixing. Make sure that you see everything that's going on so you can duplicate this for yourself at home. We're gonna go through this process step by step. You're gonna follow along with me as I do the steps. Remember, this is a video. You can pause, you can rewind. You can make me paint at your pace, and I highly recommend that. If you're here for the live chat, either on Facebook or YouTube, I want to say hi. Thank you so much for coming to the lives. We really appreciate it. If you have a question, put that all in caps. Either the moderators will help you find that information, or you might get your question asked on this live show. Mm -hmm. um, this really is a space for beginners, and I recognize you may not have all the materials that I have today, so I'm going to tell you all the materials and then I'm also going to let you know where maybe some exchanges are possible or where you can just make this your own with what you have at home until you find out that watercolor really is your favorite and you want to get all the things. But I recognize we can't always do that the first time we run into a lesson, mm. <laughs> just streaming somewhere and think to ourselves, I think I might like to paint. If that's you today, this is a lesson. This is what you've been looking for. So look at this gorgeous scene. Isn't this wonderful? It's awesome. Almost none of the work is done by me. It is done by the paint. It's really great. Uh, watercolor tends to develop. And the principle I want you guys to keep in your mind today is that the color goes where the water is. So if the paper's dry, the colors only go where you put down a brush stroke. But if the paper is wet, the color's going to bloom and flow through the water. Uh, the other thing I'm going to say is I am working on cold press paper today. That's bumpy paper, but hot press paper uh, is smooth. That doesn't prevent blooming. I saw someone being concerned that maybe the hot press paper was preventing the blooming, but the blooming, that's the flow of the paint where it makes these soft, fuzzy shapes. That's really about the surfacants in your paint, like uh, inside the paint or in your water. This is oxgall. That's about breaking the water tension, and I'll talk about that as we go through this lesson. Okay. Woo. I have some other really kind of good news. Um, I have been recommending the Faber and Castell Pit Artist Pen as a waterproof, let me scoot over to the side here a little bit, as a waterproof pen. Um, and I'll use her, this for the girl at the end. It's the only place I'm going to use it. Another option that I found and I tested uh, over in the corner was the Posca pen. I was able to use the Posca pen as a waterproof pen uh, as long as I let it completely dry. So that worked out really well. And I have found that some of the big pens are waterproof. So, and if you want to just do it in the gray paint, you can. So there's lots of options. Oh my goodness. You know what I forgot today, John? What did you forget? I have all my T-squares over at the Big Easel. The square T's? I can yeah. get them. Yeah, we'll get that in a second. We'll get it when we're doing the thing. You're okay. So um, let's go over the materials in today's thing. I'm going to be using Fabriano uh, Artistico Traditional White. So this isn't the extra white today. This is the traditional white. Extra white helps you get like more vibrant colors. And um, right now all my extra white pads are busy with other paintings. So or traditionally whiting today. It really is about your preference. What's important to you at home is the idea that this is 300 GM or 140 pound paper for watercolor. That means two things. The paper is thick enough to take a heavy wet technique and that it has the sizing to keep the water on the surface enough to do the techniques that we're seeing. Sizing is a process that they do when they make the paper. Um, I wish I could tell you the copy paper would do these techniques. They, it doesn't. It just doesn't. It's too light. It's about 20 to 30 pounds at the heaviest. 20 is most people's copy paper. 30 is like a really heavy copy paper. And it's just going to wrinkle and buckle and the paper, the paint is going to soak into it. So it really does need to be watercolor paper. That is the one thing that, you know, you might be a little uh, kind of stuck on. But there's lots of options and lots of costs. The other thing that I recommend to you as a beginner Unless you want to tape down your sheets of paper every time you paint, you want to get something called a block, and the block has all of the sheets glued together except a little tiny corner. Let's see if I can show you that corner here. There it is. And what that does is as your paper is wet, because even this thick paper will want to move a little bit, um, it will not only help it not buckle, but it will stretch it again as it dries. So super convenient for you. And if in your first expense, I want to say that you do in your watercolor is believe it or not, your paper. First expense. And I recommend Fabriano. 
but there's lots of other good papers like Strathmore has a pretty good block that I like. Um, if you're having trouble with your bloom, you may want to pick up some ox gall. Uh, we're going to test some other tips out there that we got like Dawn and stuff like that, um, because that may not be that unarchival, which was sort of interesting because that's not true in acrylic. I'm going to be using a number 14 round soft aqua brush. I do recommend these brushes because they're synthetic, but perform exactly like hair. And man, that is awesome. So like no little squirrel in the brush. It's a synthetic squirrel or synthetic squirrel. Yeah, not real squirrel. And it just has a great point and it's an amazing brush. And I am super impressed with these. So I highly recommend them. I'm also uh, going to be using just to wet out my paper, a big, nice, soft, wide brush. Now this is interesting. It's an acrylic brush, but it's pretty soft and it's going to let me wet out the paper in a more controlled way. You could use a hake brush. You could use just your uh, 14 and just wet it out real fast or even a mister bottle if you're just really stuck in fact when i was first painting i used to take my sheets and just run them under the sink and <laughs> kind of shake them out and then tape them down so it's very flexible if you're wondering how flexible is this is this forgiving these things are good to know the other thing you absolutely want to have around absolutely want to have around is paper towels because that helps you control your paint and water and a bunched up paper towel i love these two things they're fantastic Today's painting is going to use quite a lot of colors. We're going to use phthalo blue a little bit. We're going to use ultramarine blue, quinacridone magenta, definitely. We're going to use transparent pyrrole orange, and we're going to use some Hansa yellow medium. We're going to use some Payne's gray. Um, we may get a little bit into our pyrrole red. We might not. All the colors that you see here on my palette, I'm using these exclusively week to week. So if you'd like to join these free classes, and be able to build up to the art materials. That's what I've done for you guys so that you can do that. And those materials are listed on the Watercolor Wednesday and You blog, which kind of answers questions about what we use, why we use it, exchanges, visual guides, just stuff. If you don't know what any of this is, it's really designed to answer that in a very direct way. Because it's okay not to know things. You're not supposed to start everything just knowing everything, right? Sometimes <laughs> it's wonderful to be at a beginning of something and be discovering things as we go. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Would you like to show them the reference picture? I can, yeah. So again, and I'll, I'll put this back out on my paper. So this is what we're going to be painting today. I have on the website uh, this image up there, and you can grab and save it to your desktop so you can use it as a reference. Um, I think it's going to be a lot of fun, and you guys are going to really like learning wet into wet. Now the first thing that I'm going to do is, and I'll show you the measurement here, and then we'll duplicate this measurement again, right? We're going to measure a horizon line and it is at six and a half inches. That's a pretty easy to duplicate horizon line, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to take my T-square ruler. I like to use T-square square rulers in all of my painting. And the reason that I do is because it really helps me draw a straight line. <laughs> so that was six and a half inches down, right? So I'm going to make a little mark here and I'm going to take a watercolor pencil. You can get watercolor pencils in very cheap and economic packs, or you can get the awesome, amazing Grand Dosh. It's really just really a preference up to you. But watercolor pencil is a pencil with watercolor paint instead of lead. And I'm going to take a yellow and just draw across. If you don't have this, you can take a pencil and make a very light line that you can see. I might make that a little bit darker so you guys can see it just for your benefits because it'll go away so I can do that. It won't ruin my painting. I'm going to make this a darker line so you can really see it. That'll help you. You guys see that a little better? Yeah. Okay. You don't need to make your line that dark. That's me doing that. Now, I need clean water. And I'm going to take my big wide brush because everything up here is going to be wet into wet. This is where our paper comes into play, right? And I'm going to uh, definitely wet that out. Now, if I wanted to use ox gall in this technique, my paints have some blooming agent in them, uh, but... If you want to do that, you would put in a few drops into the water to help break down the surface tension is what you're doing. Mm. I'm just pre-wetting the paper. I want the paper to be wet enough to have a light sheen on it, but not so wet the fish can swim in it. Right? We're not trying to make a little pond. And you can see the watercolor pencil action there as the water gets on it. Mm -hmm. And pulls it up. I chose yellow because that's very uh, close to the color that I'm going to be um, having above. Okay, so we have that there. I'm going to get my number 14 round. And let's start 
with a little yellow. I'm going to take just a little bit of this watercolor. If you've never seen yourself wet out a watercolor thing, notice that I'm not going into the thick paint. The first thing you want to get out of the mindset on is that you're going to go into the thick paint and pull out any thick paint. You want to take water, a wet brush. See how that brush is dropping? Mm -hmm. And you want to thin the watercolor with water. If you're painting with acrylics today, you're going to actually be thinning the acrylics this much. Just make sure you're doing it on watercolor papers. So I've thinned it a lot. And I'm going to come here and I'm going to paint out kind of loosely. Notice that I'm wiggling my brush back and forth. It's a light color. In watercolor, we paint from our lightest colors to our darkest colors. That's kind of the reverse of traditional uh, other painting mediums. So you might be confused if you hadn't done that before. The white is generally the white on our paper. So I did get some cool new products today to play with. I'll show you guys later that I'm super excited about. Notice that I'm making an irregular shape here and I'm allowing the paint to do what's called blooming or settling. We want this to develop and become what it is uh, very loosely. Now I'm going to take a little bit of my ultramarine. I'm going to pull this out here a little bit and notice that I'm making a thin value of it. I might get just a smidge of my phthalo blue in it. If you only have one of these blues, don't worry. That's okay. You're okay. Just use the one that you have. Don't be stressed out. And I'm going to make sure that I'm adding some of this blue very lightly to the paper. See how we're doing? There go. Come here and about halfway in the sky, I'm coming down. Notice that I just allow it to find its way through. I don't paint over my yellow and I'm allowing the paint to move and transition. This is why paper is everything right here. The ability to do this work is huge. I'm gonna come up with my blue, maybe get a little more blue into it. Now you might normally kind of work with a bigger brush, but honestly, in the, at this stage, you're all right. Okay, this is all sort of going. If anything is too wet, you can take your brush and soak up the water. See how I did that? Mm -hmm. Very carefully. You just get your brush dry on a paper towel and it will pick up. The other thing that you can do, see here, is bring up some with a paper towel. So that's why you have this here. This is also a lot of people like to make clouds this way with a paper towel. It's a subtractive method. Um, and works pretty well. So those are those are good ways to do it. I'm going to take a little of my quinacridone magenta and my ultramarine blue together, and I'm going to make a dark purple that I like very, very much. And I'm going to come up to the top and just put a little bit there. And let's get a little bit of our pink, perhaps. And I'm going to add some of that there. And look at that bloom and go. And I'm not going to try to stop that. I'm going to let that be what it is. That's some of the drama of the sky. Mm. And sometimes you don't want to take away the drama in your sky. It may do some unexpected things, but we want to let that develop and let that uh, start to find its way. So this up here is going pretty well. I'm going to go ahead and take a second and come down and wet the lower half. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this paper dry some, not completely, just some. And that way it will let me put the next series of techniques in. If I want to take my big brush, I can and grab some of my yellow. Kind of continuing on that yellow from up top. Just save myself some trouble, right? <laughs> mm. I also want to come in and grab some of my blue, which I have over here. And let's add some blue to the ocean, just a little bit. I'm going to do this about the halfway point between my horizon line and the base of my paper. I'm adding a little blue in here. Not too much. And then kind of coming at the bottom, I'm going to get into my transparent pyro orange. And I'm going to start about one inch from this left side and pull over to a couple of inches on the right. 
This is just early days into a technique we're going to do with our water. So that's kind of orange. And then while I'm here, I'll go ahead and add some of my pink. Oh, that's gotten really, mm. that's really the ox gall is really pulling that out today, isn't it? And come back with a little bit of my orange. And let this be down here. Notice it's almost at a curve. I might take some of my uh, paper towel, make sure that I've got a little white a couple places here. Mm -hmm. Tap, tap, tap for when I bring the wave in to have a little water in it. But I like that. I don't want to do too much. I'm going to let a lot of this happen. I'm also going to come in and maybe put a little bit of a darker purpley magenta feel back here. That's looking good. Rinse, 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 rinse. Now, this isn't completely dry up top, but it's drier. We've got some really dramatic stuff we want to allow to happen down on the bottom. Resist using the hair dryer unless you're trying to stop the developing of your paint. So, In other words, as this dries and goes into the paper and softens and blends on the paper with each other, there's all these little magic moments, and you want to let as many of those happen as you possibly can to get the best result out of your painting as you can. Now I'm going to come here and get a little of my orange. Get a little orange. I'm sure I might work some yellow into it so there's some variables. I'm going to come here. And I'm going to make a nice little cloud. It's okay if it blooms a couple places. I might come across the bottom here some. Get a little of my yellow. And we'll work some stronger yellow up in there. Mm -hmm. Every time we get in here is an opportunity to find a new sky. Even for me right now is an opportunity right now to find a new sky. I like that very much. I'm going to maybe grab some of my orange over here. Mm. Let's come and maybe do a little bank. Notice that I just kind of let this be up into the soft blue cloud. And I'm going to let them bloom in together. Go ahead and get a little yellow. I'll take a little yellow over into this little bank here. Anytime you want to pick up paint, you can very easily do that with your handy dandy tissue. Up top, we have a lot of purple. So I'm going to get a lot of my all terrain blue and a lot of my Queen Magenta together. Wet out quite well. And we're going to come in from the top. This works best if it's still a little wet. Mm. Not completely wet. Not as wet as when we first put out our light wash. And it's okay if we run into some spots that the paper is a little harder or drier. We just want to make sure that we're making these irregular little shapes. And kind of form and tell us about the sky. And can rinse out. And if I want things to be a little wetter, I can just come along and add some water. And I can still soften that out and create some light effects there. Maybe come and get a little of my quinacridone underneath, right? Get a little quinacridone. Make a regular shapes. Notice that my brush is dancing up and down. It's being unexpected in what it's doing. 
And the only reason the paper is holding together through this wet application of paint guys is that it is the 300 GSM. It is sized for watercolor and it is in a block. These things coming together, those are essential. Mm. Other stuff you can kind of work out, but you know, getting it in the little block, that's a uh, that's important. Oh, I'm going to kind of pull a little see. Oh, yeah. Little broken up clouds is sort of fun to do. Cuz they do that too, don't they? They kind of make Really getting into my sky today mm. happens. See, I'm seeing this little brush up and down. And this hard edge, right? That makes the shape of the cloud. A lot of what you start to do in practice in art is learn how to create a little contour edge of something that's reminiscent of the natural objects that we're trying to paint. I'm going to come in and get a little of my orange, some of my quin together. I love the combo of these things. Transparent pyrrole orange and the quin. I'm also kind of painting a negative space little white cloud here that's happening. You can make these little clouds get thin and far away. Look at that little moment. That's a great passage. Maybe grab a little of our two blues together. What kind of a dark color here? make some of these clouds have a darker center. Now that sort of in cloud shading, it really just kind of finds its own way, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. We have to let our moments happen. There's a little bit of white here. I'm going to do everything I can to leave that in. I know my tree's probably going to cover it up, but it's really spectacular. <laughs> if I weren't adding trees, that would be everything in the painting for me. Maybe kind of work some little blue in here. Yeah. Tap it up, and then I'm going to get into my thalo a little bit. Like that. Look at that go. This is a little... uh dry down here. So believe it or not, I can come back and kind of very carefully wet glaze over it. I'm just, I don't want to reactivate the paint because watercolor will reactivate. This will continue to move and soften, but I still want soft, soft applications here and there. So I'm going to really need to have that going on. Mm. I'm not going to be able to see that, I don't think. There we go. Now, I want a little more yellow in there, so I'm going to come back into my ounce of yellow. And I don't want to lose my horizon line. That's something I'm going to try to be careful of. Look at that when you put the yellow back in it, like creates a glow in that space, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. 
I can't lighten, but I can add pigment to a situation. All right. I can add yellow. and create a pop of light that is really quite beautiful. I can even add yellow, say right here, if I want to kind of glazed in over my beach. It might be real pretty later, that pop of yellow that we glazed in. And what I'm doing is I'm creating a little corridor of light. Mm -hmm. That is sort of reflected of what's here. I might grab a little blue. Kind of make some ripples in the water. We get a little more thalo on that. Look at that. It's really neat this time. No, I want to refine this, so I'm going to turn this a little bit to the side because I don't want to lose, again, my horizon. Brushing back and forth. Paper is wet. We are working wet into wet. Mm -hmm. a little bit of drama there a little bit of drama i'll come back with my yellow mm. it's gonna be dramatic yeah you're using ox gall there yeah yes in the water the water has some ox gall Sometimes when I look and I go, oh, that's a moment, I kind of don't fight it and I let it have a little thing. You want to just not fight every moment in your painting. And then I'm going to get a little of my purple, which is my Quinn and make sure that some of those purple clouds are reflected in the water a little bit. Doesn't have to be perfect. All right, do I, all right, I'm going to have to let this dry for a second. So I'm going to go catch some questions. Um, Chun, Sunflower Cherry asks one question. Can you do any kind of beach? Yes, any kind. Any kind? Any kind. Okay, any kind of beach. Car, if it's got a dune buggy on it, I would be challenged. Huh. <laughs> but I'm getting better at that because you guys have asked me to do some cars now, so I've had to face my car issues. And I'm, I'm not Carol Marine good at it, but I am, I am better at it. Um, Melissa Peterson says, I'm noticing you're painting clouds kind of towards the center instead of straight across. Does that help with perspective? I find that it does. Like personally, in my preference, I find when the clouds have um, depth and dimension to them and shading, and they also have scale and go into a vanishing point so that you recognize that they're, they're objects that have mass and shape. I, I like it a lot, and I, I find that that kind of curve 
helps lean towards that and and I rather rather like that um Jennifer Bowman is it just me or does this Fabriano paper stay wet longer yeah so here's the thing I never want to make you guys feel like you got to go with some bushy art material <laughs> that's pretentious for some pretentious reason I just don't like to make you feel like that because I think it alienates people from art right this feeling that I've got to have this or be that or da 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 and art is not like that. Um, but there are some things about art as you paint a little bit. You'll notice that some materials just give you a better result. And yeah, the Fabriano paper is the bomb. Fabriano, the extra white. Well, I love the cold press. Some people prefer hot press. Hot, they're just, the difference is just preference. It's bumpy or smooth. That's the difference between the papers. The Fabriano paper, I love the sizing. Yeah, there are people who are like arches until death. Um... And I'm kind of like, I maybe used to be that person, but now I might be a Fabriano. And, and in all fairness, like I'm friends with the guy that imports it in the United mm. States and I think he's a doll. But I was friends with him before I liked the paper, even though they were associated. And I do like the paper, like deeply like the paper. That's my honest opinion. Though they do send me paper, just so you know where I'm at. Because I always want you guys to like, like know exactly what my thing is. However, and John can verify this, I will I buy blocks of it too. Like if it doesn't, if I'm, I'm low, I'll, I'll hit Amazon. Though I don't think Amazon is the best place to buy. I got to I got to get better at hitting Dick Blick and and Jerry's Artorama and Cheap Joe's and stuff when I'm looking for art supplies. Um. Oh, I want to thank Darla for the stars. That is amazing. I really appreciate that. Uh, you guys will notice that you can send stars on Facebook or super chat on YouTube. I never expect anybody to do that. That does not get your questions answered. It does help us. Uh, fund the studio and keep making free art stuff so if you want to do that that's great if you want to do something kind of permanent you can come be a patron either of those things are great um what is the ox gall and the purpose of it okay like fu functionally i think ox gall is actually what it sounds like it is like i think it's an ox gall like it's the juice from a isn't it john like the juice from it or i think it is what it is the the gall of an, an ox. ox. Yeah, I think so. I think it you might know, be the bile or something. It, it is a it is is a biological project product from um, cows. Um, okay, so an uh, an artist grade wetting agent. Whenever you see a product, any product that that's says what I understand. wetting agent, if if the bottle says wetting agent, what it does is it breaks down the surface tension of the water and will allow the pigment to flow through the water. That's what it does. Uh, when mixed with watercolors will improve the flow and enhance wet into wet techniques. It also improves uh, acceptance of watercolor to paper, particularly hard sized papers. Some, some papers are really hard sized and they won't take the thing. And then, you know, don't drink it, don't eat it, don't wear it, don't swim in it, you know, use precautions because it's a surficant. You should always use precautions um, with any surficants, just in general. It's just, it's a smart thing to do. I'm getting there. I don't want to have to use the hair dryer, um, but I will at some point have to use it just for the purposes of this lesson. And then Roxanne Bergeron, I hate to leave and I have to go to work. Oh my gosh. I hope I got your question before you had to go to work. Can someone tell Roxanne that I answered it? <laughs> um, can you do a pelican flying loose? Um, a loose style pelican flying I would like to, and if you like birds, check out the bird hop I'm doing with my mom, Ginger Cook. She's got a YouTube channel, Ginger Cook Live, and I have an acrylic YouTube channel and teach acrylic on Facebook too. And on September 11, uh, starting at 1 p.m., we're going to have another bird hop. Mm -hmm. So if you like birds. Okay. So I've let some paper dry and answered some questions. I feel like I've been uh, good about that. All right. So I gotta move my water so I can see my own reference. I'm gonna take a little bit of this kind of deep burgundy and I'm gonna heavily load it with pigment. I'm not gonna scoop up like it's acrylic heavily load, but I'm gonna make sure that the brush has got a dark version of it. I'm gonna come over about an inch up, like two fingers. And I am going to make a little beachy shoreline. The shoreline will finish out over here. Now I might make it a little bit light over part of it because I know I've got to put my palm tree kind of through here. Mm -hmm. I know I've got a palm tree through there. So I might be lighter with it there, but it's, it's going to be some serious biz for me.
I kind of wet back a little bit because the sea foam, you know, what it do. And it's a little wet over here for it. So I, I, my inclination would always be to allow the paper to fully resolve mm. before hitting any more paint. However, um, because I've got to teach you guys in some sort of a timely fashion, I'm going to have John hand me the hair dryer. Hand and hair I'm going to dry this just enough to get the hard edge and then also to start putting the tree in. But that's just for the purposes of you guys learning at home. You, please, at home, just chill back, relax, sip a cup of tea, coffee, whatever you relax to, and allow the paper to dry. Yeah. And the natural drying process allows for the capillary action, for the paint to sort of settle in in those sort of pretty artistic ways that everybody enjoys. Um, that isn't to say that uh, using your hair dryer to speed that process up doesn't create a different effect that you may not decide that you want. It might, but you should be aware that it does affect it. And most of the time, uh, it is considered to be a not positive effect because that natural resting creates a prettier, more intricate kind of, uh, how do you say, uh, delicateness um, to, the, to, the, to the work. And you really can't get that unless you use this kind of paper with the wetting agents and allow it the time to do that. So uh, that's just generally what we're wanting to convey. Um, uh, I hope in the description down below you'll find all sorts of um, information about like where the website is, where the resources are at. Um, what else can you find? Find out when we're going to go live. Oh, if you go to our website, theartsherpa.com, you can uh, get Make information, sure dry, dry. calendar, and all sorts of cool stuff. Go ahead. I'm just wrapping up my thoughts there. No, it's a good the announcements are good. I appreciate announcements. All right, back into our dark color, which is our quinacridone and our ultramarine. I'm going to come here and make sure that I've got a nice along the beach and a dark color that helps me define the edge of this. You want to make sure that I don't get too like there. Really just because um, I, I want the uh, tree to show beautifully and watercolors are transparent. I can, you know, add a little bit of color to this. And I can come over with like a wet brush and it will soften out and glaze into the, the water. But you'll notice the front edge where the paper is dry has a very hard edge. Mm -hmm. That is the secret of that. I'm going to do a weird thing here. I'm going to come in and get a little bit of my yellow. Oh, Patty, thank you. Oh, Patty, thank you. I celebrate Patty. <laughs> and I wanted to say that I'm sending extra hearts and loves and everything. Today. There we go. Patty is just, everyone just, I don't want to say why because Patty is a private person, but if you can, if you're on YouTube and you can throw up a heart for Patty, throw up a heart for Patty. Mm -hmm. And then Patty can determine whether she wants to share with her why she has a heart or not. Sometimes I don't like to, uh, you know, because I know you guys in a in a really personal way, and I don't want to like social media out anybody. Right. <laughs> so, but throw up some extra hearts. It's been amazing, and so had a week. All right, I'm gonna dry this again. Okay. Yes. And let's see here. I probably have some secret messages I can give you guys. Let's see if I can find. Do 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 do. Huh? Is that one it? Oh, I think this is one. Let me see if I can make it happen. If you would like to get text notifications, you can send the message the Art Sherpa to the phone number 33222, and then you'll get a notification when we go live. There we go. All right. This is just kind of a wild and beautiful sunset. 
with the thing. Now, one thing I can sometimes do is I can take my T-square and I'm going to just get a little bit of my, let's just say orange. Orange is good. And then come across here and make kind of a hard line. Check that out. And that really helps pull the water apart. <laughs> It's all pretty abstract, but it's the thing. Now, the pens, dry, 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 dry. I did test the Posca pen, and I, I wanted to test it because uh, most of the information on it is, you generally get these on Amazon. Um, they're not really uh, yet officially, I think, imported in the U.S. because they only have Japanese information on them, and uh, the U.S. requires the safety information be readable to you. So, uh, if you have a pen, if you have an art material legally imported into your country, just even your country, wherever you live, there should be something on it translated into your language so that you can have the safety information just in case there's something you need to know. Light fastness, is it safe or not? You know, things you need to know. Um, but sometimes because of the internet, we can buy things online. And um, so I have to do some testing and stuff on these. Hmm. They're pretty well loved. Like a lot of people use them, but I did um, test them and. I was pretty happy with it. Now I'm going to draw my girl and I'm going to say that my girl is, she's about this tall. See here, about that tall. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's my very technical measurement. She's about that tall. I'm going to put her a little bit here in the center and I'm going to just make a dot. That just gives me a place to just break so she doesn't change scale completely. Right. And so if I have a head, this is a Faber-Castell black pen. You're welcome to use the traceable, <laughs> absolutely, and not just ink this in. But this is how I do this, so I thought you might enjoy seeing. So I'm gonna come down here, and we're gonna say that she's got a little bit of a neck and some shoulders. It would be bigger than that for the size of the body. Bodies are generally six to seven heads high. Models are eight to nine heads high when they're drawn in fashion illustration. I'm going to give myself a little hip line. And I'm going to cock a leg forward because mm -hmm. she's walking forward, right? She's walking forward. So I'm going to cock that head, that foot even a little more forward and down, and then that'll be the... I'm going to pull a little foot out. I like to do these little figures. A little silhouette of them. Going to have to pull the legs apart a bit. Just because I got the feet to position too far apart. I'm going to cock that hip more. Not too bad. Didn't get too far away from us. It can get real far away from you. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. Now I'm going to say that her arm is going to come here and a little bit forward. And this arm's going to come here and a little bit back as if she's walking. And then we're going to have a little bit of a hand. And that's all I've got to worry about there. We've got a lot of hair. Hair is going to make up for a lot. I can't even explain to you how much hair makes up for. Hmm. But we like to have a little bit of a, of a body positioning. I'm going to build up. When I'm drawing with ink and I'm trying to freehand like this, I just build up slowly. Just a little bit of a paddle for hand. We're not going to see each individual finger, right? We're going to just see the just general shadow shape of a hand. So now we kind of know what's... Let's go in here. I'm going to put a little tie here and a little, a little tie here. And it goes off so she you knows she's got a, like a bikini. 
And then the hair can come off. Oh, got a little crazy with the hair there. I always get a little crazy with the hair. I'll tell you that's where it gets interesting for me is I'm like, hair is in motion, man. Stuff is blowing on the beach. Hmm. Someone loves you. Mm. <laughs> I shouldn't have turned my phone off. <laughs> All right. Let's put a little bit there. And I might make sure that that flowing hair, mm -hmm. you know, is, is present around. So it's kind of like this crazy windy hair. When we have that in, when we have a figure in that we like, right, then Gonna add little back and forth shadows coming out. As it comes out, they're maybe not as close together, right? So close mm -hmm. together near her, further out. Okay, shade in the water. A lot of this is in shade. There we go. We got a girl. She's a She's a having a walk. Mm. She's having a walk and having to think. There we go. Right? On that. So that's what I use the pen for. You can paint this in with paint. You can use the traceable if you're not a person that draws yet. Um, I highly suggest taking up drawing. It's kind of fun. And it's I always like to see where it takes me. So whatever's right for you, I definitely support. But that's how I get her in. Now I'm going to take my little brush here and I'm going to come into my Payne's Gray and I'm going to load up pretty heavily. Pretty heavily. And I'm going to come from the top of my canvas. Oops. About, gosh, three, four fingers over. Oh, let me go up there. You read it. Really? And I'm going to just take a brush stroke down and uh, paint me a palm tree. There we go. It, the palm tree will be thinner at the top than at the bottom. And that is an important thing to realize. It will not get thick in the middle of the trunk. I like it to sort of take up the corner here really implies that it's entering and exiting the painting. And I'm going to use this as heavily pigmented. You could use gouache for this part, but I like the blooming of the paint. And I kind of like some of the weird transparency of it. Another thing I'm going to do while I'm here is I'm going to take my magenta and a little bit of my Payne's Gray together. I'm going to make some little rocks on the beach. All right, these are just little dark marks of little pebbles or things that have happened out here. I think it's kind of important to add those little details. It also lets you kind of see how your watercolor is going to settle if you need to go back with another layer. Little little pebbles on the beach. Mm -hmm. Pretty fun, loose little wet and wet watercolor. I'm going to come here and get a lot of paint. I'm going to load up very heavily on my brush. I'm not loading up. I'm still wetting the watercolor down. 
This is very dry. This needs to be dry for this next part to work. I'm going to come over, oh gosh, about an inch over, and I'm going to curl down. A little palm frond. I don't want to cover up all my beautiful golden sunlight, so I'm going to stop there. And I'm going to begin painting this with little fronds that flick out, kind of initially straight out. But they're going to blend in and they're going to change direction. I'm just on the toe of my brush. I'm blending the little leaves into the line so there's nothing really just hung there. And I can even come back and put another layer and create some dimensionality into the paint. Here's another little frond coming from the tree, sort of going down. So let's make sure that we're layered. It's fun to leave little spots like this open. Don't paint out all the good little moments that happen in your painting, right? These little bits of light that are peeking through the leaves, that's, mm -hmm. that's the magic secret sauce, right? Maybe another little one that's coming down here. Palm trees are kind of a hot mess, mm -hmm. which is just wonderful. Because it means your painting can be just like whatever you want it to be. All right, little turn there. Interesting little line. Let's bring one kind of down here. You see, it's just a little flick. I really like this part of the painting. You know, you could put a little dog if you wanted to add a little companion. He doesn't have to be walking alone. I kind of like the solitary moment. I think we've all been in our houses so much in the noise that we're like, you know, a little time away at the beach would be amazing. All right, here we go. Just flicking out, flicking out, flicking out, flicking out. Look at that. Do you just love this? Now this, now this is a beach you're just like, I want to get away to this beach. Mm -hmm. As the palm tree is drying, you can see like how, uh, if you want to add any more coverage to the, to the uh, palm itself. Deepen that in any way. There's a really cool little palm frond that's coming kind of from the corner and maybe out like that. Why? We don't really know. Could be closer to us, probably would be closer to us in this scale. We're gonna just Kind of fun. Little one coming off the side. Maybe layer this one over the top. Mm -hmm. We decide. I'm gonna get a little water on my brush, make sure it's fairly pigmented. and add some little palms to the top. Mm 
Always add little layers, any little details that you want to like change up or make different. See the positioning here puts us, the viewer, maybe sitting up a little hill looking down at the beach. We could be in a little cabin watching someone walk up the beach. Mm -hmm. We can be the girl on the beach or we can be the viewer of the beach. That's why it's so relaxing to look at. It lets our mind pick a location, one that's the best for us to be. Adding little fronds around. It just adds a, like a framing to the piece. And a little framing goes a long way. A little corner there. And a little framing at the top, doesn't it? I mean, that is it. That is the loose little abstract watercolor with a girl walking on the beach. Wow. You know, you can make it a dude walking on the beach. Doesn't have to be a girl. Could be just any reflection of your life that you want. But the idea is either that this is your view from wherever you are or you are the subject that's there. When uh, this is all done, one of the cool things is, is because I used pen in the painting, I can sign with pen. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna. And sign right here. And I'll answer any of the questions that I missed before I slop off. We got a couple here. All right. Like you guys can look that in. Remember, listen, if you've never done wet into wet before and it's just a new experience, kind of treat it like a roller coaster and just go wee all the way down. Don't try to control the ride. Just see where the ride takes you. Eventually, painting after painting takes about 20, I find, whether you're learning acrylic or learning watercolor. For you to kind of get a sense of what your brushes and your paint and your paper will do and how to make them go. If you guys paint watercolor with me all the time, throw out an encouraging word to the new artist that's sitting there being hypercritical of themselves today to just relax and realize that they're going to get there. It's just enjoy the ride. All right. Questions? Oh, let's see here. What is gouache? Gouache is like watercolor, has a similar binder, but it is chalkier and more opaque and lays down in thick applications that sit on top of each other and the paper. So instead of being transparent like what we have here. Mm. So what kind of palette were you using there? It's kind of okay. interesting. This is an overkill palette. This is the Tom Lynch porcelain palette. Comes with the lid, completely seals. You can keep your watercolor paint wet mm -hmm. um, if you're use, working from the tube um, in this palette. If you do the whole thing, it's got little brush holders. It's got different little cubbies and holdies, and it weighs about a million pounds. I labeled it with the um, PBO ceramic pen and baked that sucker right in the uh, oven. Mm -hmm. um, and it's it's held up okay. Uh, the the pen, the palette's been fine. It's, it's As long as you don't break it, it's perfect. But here's the thing. The takeaway is a porcelain palette. You can get a butcher tray for about $8. Porcelain butcher tray. Mm -hmm. So, um, and you can find them sometimes in art stores, sometimes just online. And it's, it's porcelain is what it is. Notice that this is like stayed wetted out and is dried there to the palette in that shape. On plastic, it'll all beat up and it just won't do that nice work for you. I can come get a little color here and get a little color here. And all of this will reactivate later. So even though it's dry, it's still good to use. Mm -hmm. Tom Lynch, though. It's a ridiculous amount of money. I feel like I do this like seven times a week now, so I, I treated myself. Now, you're going to do another lesson here about like the different materials and options and things for like uh, ox gall and other salt Yeah, Yeah, we're, so we're doing some said. talking to some materials companies. Like some, some different things that were suggested were uh, glycerin or uh, Dawn. And Dawn. see, I discourage that with my acrylic students because acrylic paint wants to foam. It, it actually tends to want to bubble and foam. And so they put a lot of agents in the acrylic paint to keep it from doing that. And uh, because glycerin and Dawn are anti-surfacants, um, they ruin that. Mm. 
Mm. Right. So you, you don't really want that with acrylic, but you might with watercolor. And we were talking to a materials expert who was mentioning the point like archival, who, like if you're not selling it and you're not keeping it for prosperity and you're just trying to see what a bloom is like, maybe it's not that big a deal. And I have to concur with that thought. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, archival is stuff you worry about after you're dead. <laughs> You're dead. Somebody else's problem. Seriously. <laughs> Sometimes if you're selling, you have to worry about it a bit. Like you, you don't want to sell something to a client for a lot of money that's going to fade out in two seconds. Right. Yeah. Without at least warning them that there is a light fast issue. Mm -hmm. You know, so we're going to we're going to figure out where those parameters are. And that's a thing. I'm going to test a bunch of pens and stuff. Um, I've got some different. We're going to do a video on line and wash. We're going to do a video on the basic techniques, just the basic stuff you have to know. Uh, basic stuff on paper and we're going to do a video on how to use acrylics um if you don't want to go out and buy watercolors yet wow that was you covered a lot of good stuff there i did i, I tend to cover good stuff so be sure to subscribe and follow the page and hmm. show these classes you can find them on the calendar you can on my web on my website calendar theartsherpa.com check it often because sometimes the calendar will look empty and then it will fill up in a day <laughs> and then people hmm. get all mad because they got too many notifications but <laughs> so silly you sent me too many free art classes unsubscribe okay sure <laughs> but uh i will fill it up sometimes in blocks and so check the calendar regularly on the website it will let you know about the watercolor classes there's the watercolor youtube channel there's the acrylic youtube channel there is the art sherpa page um and that one is a really good one you can follow instagram to see paintings that we've done uh if you see it up on instagram generally it's a painting that we've done so you can go take that class um, there's a lot of locations to find it. Everything is on replay here in the watercolor, uh, Wednesday playlist for watercolors and the acrylics are in the acrylic playlist. And I think we're also on Facebook watch. Mm -hmm. Um, and then again, the watercolor Wednesday playlist on YouTube also holds everything. Just, just sit, hit the bell at whenever, wherever you are, just do all the human things about being notified. It's going <laughs> to ask you, do you want to be notified? Say yes and mean it. <laughs> yeah. Because it will notify you and then you can show up to these live classes and chat and see it happen and then paint it again later in a relaxed way. That's the whole point, right? Yeah. Just to enjoy it and paint it again later in a relaxed way. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. You got it. You can do it. You know you can. You're capable. You're a capable person. You probably did five things that were impossible this week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Painting is not going to be one of them. Don't let yourself get too wrapped up in it. Just say we and take the downhill ride. <laughs> They're definitely, definitely interested in the, uh, the porcelain palette. And are you doing any more giveaways? Yes. So um, I'm going to actually start doing some watercolor giveaways too because we have some stuff to do. Uh, the I'm going to, uh, on the acrylic classes this week, I'm going to do a giveaway over at least the next three, but maybe for a little bit of coming duration. Hmm. I'm going to give away little things. Maybe it'll be a sign print. Maybe it'll be enamel pins. Maybe it'll be a set of brushes. I don't know, but I have stuff I could give away. What we've got to do is, um, one of the things that's hard is we, our family is global. Our art family is global, but shipping is not easy global. It's broken up our family. Oh. <laughs> I want to ship globally, but some places are really hard to ship to. Mm -hmm. And then with the pandemic going on, have become even harder to ship to. So we've been doing uh, con giveaways in the contiguous United States. And I've got to figure out a digital prize that we can do for everybody globally. Maybe. I'm not really sure. We're, we're working on trying to figure out how to solve it because that is a little frustrating uh, that we can't do it globally. But right now we're in the contiguous United States until we can uh, get. And then as we figure out where we can easily ship certain things, then we'll open it up. Yeah. More and more. Isn't that frustrating, though? Don't you think we just ought to have a universal post office just to get stuff everywhere? Mm -hmm. I don't want to say anything crazy that upsets everybody <laughs> in this current political climate, but I'm just saying, I, I wish that it was like flat rate $8 the world. Yeah. <sighs> if only Jeff Bezos would do some good, right? Yeah, if only. Hey. He's got the infrastructure. He can make shipping. He made cheap. a rocket ship. He gets Amazon on two day prime. <laughs> Where's my drone that delivers packages? Where is it, dude? <laughs> Give Elon the money. He knows how to build it. Um, Just a different kind of outer space he's going to. Jeff Bezos did go to outer space. He, he, he went to <laughs> he space, went... not the outerish space. He was in the, like, 
he was still in it out. He like would, needed some oxygen. I I give him <laughs> massive cred for putting his own butt on the line in his own little rocket ship. Though. I I I do too. I give that's him some... that. I give him that cred. And but like not for nothing. That's just a really high aircraft. Uh, I, that's, I don't that's know. A the super... Star Trek nerd in me had a whole moment with all these like close to low Earth orbit rockets well, where they're like. Know. We're in space. I'm like, no, go to the moon. Then you're in space. That, That's when you're in space. Get to the moon and get back. Then you went to space. There's scale. There's, like, there's definitely scale. I don't know. They're planning on putting a restaurant out there in space. Well, see, there you go. Did you hear that? They're going to have a restaurant because um, if wealthy people want to eat in space. There's only space, one space restaurant I want to eat at. So this is, I think, I think about things that I don't know about you guys. Do you ever think about things? I think about things at night and I think about this restaurant in space and what I'm obsessed with is the mater d' and the bussers and uh, the, the bar backs and this the waiters and waitresses and think- the host. Like, like, what is that commute like? How do you call home? How long do you have to be there? Do you have to be trained as an astronaut to also be a waiter in space? Like, the rich people coming up there and getting their food or whatever, that's not that interesting to me. The people that have to work on the space station, I want a reality show about. I, I Forget housewives, forget any of that. I want a reality show about the poor people they're sending up to that thing to work there. Restaurant Christian? at the end of the universe. Yeah. Remember the book? Yeah, of course I remember the that's, book. That's how I think it would go down. <laughs> I think it would go down. <laughs> You'd be looking around going, yeah, yeah, that's... They're going to the- serve printed cow there. You know, the cow that they print now, they, don't, they, they grow the cow meat, but there's no actual cow. The printed They're going to serve that there, and I don't know. I used to eat space food sticks as a kid. They'll, maybe they'll have space food sticks. Does any of you... They were like a Tootsie Roll, but not a Tootsie Roll, and supposedly astronauts ate them. But now I've come to realize that everything they told me when I was a kid was a total lie. All right. Well, you're, we're talking beyond our hour mark. I didn't even realize it. That's eh, okay. Sometimes we chat. That's we why do, you subscribe. Uh, you like the chat talk? at the end? Stay for the chat at the end. Sometimes we'll talk stay to you about chat. stuff. We chatty. Quick stay for the Get chat. Get a comment. Too many words. Too many. It's okay. Be good to yourselves, guys. Seriously. It's crazy out there right now. And all you can do is take the time to self-care. Be kind to yourselves, be kind to your family, be kind to your communities. Think about yourselves, think about others, right? We've got to, we've got to stop being individualists and start thinking about our community as a whole. That's how we're going to get to a better place. We've got to start seeing these the systems as interconnected. So be good to yourselves. That's the first step. Self-care is the first step. Be good to each other because that's how we make everything better. And I want to see you at an easel really soon. Or pod, why call pod? Bye-bye.